We're glad to have you back. It's still your Monday edition of Business Nigeria. The United Arab Emirates is one of Nigeria's largest trading partners in the Middle East, and the relationship has continued to grow over the years. In the early days, the UAE and Nigeria traded mainly in oil. Over the years, the relationship has, of course, diversified, and the UAE has become a major investor in Nigeria. One of the key areas where UAE has invested in Nigeria is the real estate including luxury residential and commercial properties. The UAE has also invested in other sectors such as agriculture, healthcare, and infrastructure. Well, let's get talking now. And joining me to do this live from Dubai uh, to discuss trade relations, he is a managing partner, uh, healthcare and business management consultant, Mr. Abubakar Ibrahim. Mr. Ibrahim, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. It's good to see you. Good afternoon, Tolu. Thank you for having me on this program. Great. Well, let's get talking. And before we get into details, I'd like you to take us through a little bit of history uh, between Nigeria and Dubai. How have we fared over the years uh, before now? Well, uh, thank you so much, Tolu, for asking that question. Uh, the UAE and uh, Nigeria has had very good bilateral trade in the past. And I must say, Nigeria being one of the biggest uh, commercial co uh, co uh, country in, in Africa, the UAE has immersely within their flights region and also investment opportunity in Nigeria has been tremendously great. Now, I must say there are certain indices we need to look at when it comes to foreign direct investment, portfolio investment, cross-border mergers and acquisition, and international trade. And I, I, I noticed that in recent times, we, we as Nigerians, we, we should understand that in order for us to improve our international investment sector, there are certain areas that need to improve in terms of security, in terms of reforms, in terms of policy, to enable the environment to be subtle for people to invest. And I know with the new coming administration, which is why uh, we're having this conversation now, and I know in very soon, I mean, within the shortest period of time, from what uh, President Ahmed Bolatinubu has instituted within his first 25 days, we've seen a great uh, business acumen decision that he has taken. So I want to believe that uh, we uh, in the United Arab Emirates will see tremendous improvement in terms of business. And we have quite a number of uh, investors also here from Nigeria in the United Arab Emirates who are looking up to the president to actually strengthen this uh, bilateral trade union as well. Mm, interesting stuff. Well, let's talk about some sectors where you think we can strengthen this relationship uh, aside oil and gas, which was the focus before now. Exactly. So we're, we're looking at areas within technology. As you can see, Dubai has actually made itself very prominent when it comes to uh, the international market. Hmm. Uh, it constitutes of a population of about 90% of its populations are expatriates. And if you look at it, this 90% of expatriates are people who are actually bringing in technology, brain drain, you know, human capacity, and also certain level of investment. And for Dubai to actually be in the front page in the last four decades, they have become, uh, you know, tremendously strong when it comes to uh, having investors coming in. They've actually taken care of their sectors. They have good policies. They have good leadership. They have good reforms to actually accommodate a certain percentage of people from all over the world. I mean, 200 countries are actually doing business here, and it's a healthy situation. Now, Nigeria can also learn from this and actually take part of this uh, key sectors that we're looking at. And we can see how we can actually form a formidable partnership with them. And I know, in uh, uh, if I may say, uh, Africa is the next uh, point of call for the world. And as you can see, a lot of uh, searchlights are within Africa when it comes to fintech technology. So I want to believe Technology within Africa is the new oil that people should start looking at and not necessarily oil. In terms of healthcare as well, I know there are a lot of companies who are willing to come over to Nigeria to invest within the healthcare sector, which I know that people are having problems with in terms of traveling out, medical tourism, and all of that. But within Nigeria, there's immense opportunity for investment as well. So we're looking at the healthcare sector. We're looking at... Uh, the property infrastructure sector, we're looking at the agriculture sector. There's a whole, 
there's a, there's an enormous amount of investment opportunity between both countries, I can tell you. Mm. Now, when we look at diplomatic relations and all of this uh, 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 partnership or strengthening relationships, we also look at issues that are affecting both countries. Like for us in Nigeria, the President Bola Tinubu is taking that head on too. That security situation and corruption is something that international partners don't really like to hear of. Uh, how is this playing out over there and how are we trying to paint that good picture of us as Nigerians or change our reputation? You allow me. Okay. Thank you so much for asking that question. You see, I would like to look at it from uh, a business point of view. Uh, every organization, every 500 Fortune companies, they, they put reputable people to actually govern, uh, do implementation, planning, managing, restructuring, every business is. Now, every country should be looked at as a business venture. Because if, if you have the right uh, brain drain, the right mindset, or the right uh, diplomatic ties or diplomatic representation within each country, it makes it easy for people to actually have inflow and outflow of policies. So I would like to say that between Nigeria and the UAE, uh, I mean, our representative, whoever would be the representative within this uh, United Arab Emirates and Nigeria, there should be a business council pact that should come and sit down, strategize, and actually look at the immense opportunity. I can tell you for sure that a platform like Dubai with the recent uh, Expo 2020 that I've just finished, if you can see within the same region in Asia and the Middle East, everyone is looking at Vision 2030. Saudi Arabia has picked up a new project called the Neon Project. Uh, Qatar is coming up with the vision of 2030. So each of these economies, they are looking at the future. They are, they are planning ahead with this future. Uh, with this uh, economic uh, impact. And if Nigeria can take a cue from this, I believe we have the capacity. Everybody looks at Nigeria as a very viable nation for business. But if we have the right policy makers, the right uh, decision makers, the right uh, strategic team in place, I believe there will be an immense improvement. I give Nigeria six months from now with the kind of brain drain that I'm seeing and the kind of conversations I've been having with a lot of uh, government officials who are actually in power right now. I understand that with that, there would be an enormous improvement with whatever situation. I don't want to talk about the past. Though. I don't want to talk about, you know, what's happening, what has created a lot of bottlenecks. How do we solve this way forward? How do we improve businesses, business relationship, diplomatic relationship, and enhance, you know, bilateral trade? Because there's an enormous opportunity, I can tell you for sure. Mm. Now, those opportunities, I want us to stay with them. And uh, like we said, President Bola Tinubu has been engaging and engaging uh, with regards to inclusive, uh, inclusive engagement. Yes, that's what he's been carrying out and to promote economic growth and development. So in specifics with the United Arab Emirates, staying with UAE now, what and what and what would you specifically say should be the steps to take so that we can harness, take advantage of the positives in this very, very big market? Now, Tolu, you know, in every economy, there needs to be discussion. There needs to be mm. serious discussion. It's not just for you to have a conversation or a diplomatic conversation and not impact certain rules and reforms. We need to have... Uh, a conversation needs to take place between the uh, United Arab Emirates leadership and the Nigerian leadership. And I know that uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu is a progressive thinker. He's a strategist, not just a politician, but someone who has uh, a scorecard of business acumen. And, you know, every, every nation wants to have a win-win situation. I can tell you for sure that I've been in the United Arab Emirates in the last 12 years, and I've studied how the United Arab Emirates has actually implemented certain policies within several countries, within several nations, and how they've been able to use certain indices to actually improve the welfare of the greater populations of the expatriates. Uh, in recent times, I do understand the visa restrictions and all of that going on within Nigeria, but I know this is for the good of all of us, not just for myself alone or a certain sect of people, but they actually, what they're doing is they're creating an enabling environment for investment, for investors. So, I mean, if Nigeria wants to do the same for investors, it has to be a win-win situation. 
So most of this conversation needs to start from now. There needs to be a business council in affiliation with the embassy, in affiliation with the uh, consulate. There needs to be the right mindset, the right people. And there should be a balanced scorecard with all of this. Like I said, everyone who is within any administration should be looked at as a business, uh, the CEO or whatever it is. And then let's see what you've been able to achieve within the first three months, six months. Let's see how we can actually create reforms and not talk about uh, the past problems. Let's see how we can build forward, which is what I am here to discuss. So the, in, building, in building this relationship further, which I know there's going to be a mass uh, opportunity. If you take, for example, the, the new law that was passed for the uh, energy sector, where the people are, the private sector is allowed to create energy for, yeah. for places in Nigeria. I believe that investors are actually eyeing this. But you see, there needs to be a reform. There needs to be policies that would enable them to come in and invest safely and leave as well. So they, 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 all this talks has to, all this conversation needs to take place. And I believe with the current dispensation, I'm very positive that yes, something good will come out of this. You've been there, like you said, for 12 years. Uh, what I would like to ask how receptive uh, <laughs> are they are to Nigerians, that will be on one side. But I'm also looking at the aspect of non-oil space. What's their interest in our non-oil products like cocoa, rubber, cashew nuts? Can they be of interest to in United Arab Emirates? Definitely, definitely, including grains. I mean, there are a lot of Indians who are coming to take grains and bring in here to sell. Wow. There are lots of other countries that are taking in materials. Right now, there's lithium in Nigeria. There's a lot of energy sectors that can be tapped in. There's mineral resources that can be tapped in. There's agriculture. Uh, my last visit to Nigeria, I found out that cotton was being produced in Nigeria right now. And it has become one of the major productions within the northern part of the middle belt of Nigeria as well. And I know cocoa also has been something that has been in time past. Groundnut is something that has been in time past. So there are a lot of commodities that are within Nigeria. And as Dubai, Dubai is a, is a hub, in an international hub. And we can use this avenue to actually build a certain kind of uh, uh, output bilateral trade, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, having confidence with uh, the Dubai uh, sector. People can actually take products and then exchange it for goods and services. There are a lot of opportunities that can come out of this conversation, so I can assure you. But like I said, with my own experience, uh, countries. Let's just say a country is singled out as Nigeria. I keep telling Nigerians who are here, my, my, my 12 years of being here, it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been, but you need to navigate your way through the 200 cultures that are within here. There's not, you can't, you can't say as a Nigerian, everywhere you go, you must impose your own uh, ideas and ideologies on people. No, there's always what you say, when you're in Rome, you behave like the Romans. When you come to my place, definitely you have to understand my culture and my tradition. So it's, it's an exchange of cultural values. So in order for us to understand this, we need to actually continue to educate ourselves. I won't say uh, Nigerian constitutes a minority here. Uh, the greater population of the people within the United Arab Emirates are the Indians. They're almost about 40, 50 percent. You have the Pakistanis, you have the uh, Filipinos, you, ha you have the... Uh, Egyptians, you have the British, the Americans, the South Africa. They're quite a, an enormous culture here. But we need to understand that if there are certain policies that have been instigated within a particular country, there's a reason why it was done. It is not, a, it is not an instigation against a particular race or culture or whatever it is. But I do understand that they, they, they enabled their environment for business. And that's why tourism has actually been a major part of their business. And for them to be able to have investors coming, they need to put stringent security issues, stringent rules and policies that would actually create a kind of correction. But if we don't have uh, the right uh, diplomatic leaders, leaders to actually litigate for us, I mean, we, we find ourselves wanting. So 
we as a community as well, we need to sensitize ourselves from time to time. We cannot always be aggressive, be, be, be annoyed, or we keep pointing blames and keep pointing fingers. No, there are indices that we need to use and you know, correct several things. And there are certain ways we need to go about it. So. Mm. Well, before we wrap up this conversation, because it's really getting interesting, uh, and I guess yeah. that we would keep a tab on this, uh, you know, keep knowing how events unfold in, in Dubai, you know, so that we see how we're making progress with all of this, because we know that the regulators and, of course, government representatives are listening to us. Now, looking at the key indices, I see beautiful projections already on paper, uh, but what is your outlook despite these challenges? Let's assume things work well and it's not business as usual. Uh, I can tell you for sure there will be an exchange of culture. If you notice, Nigeria, in the, in the scene of uh, our entertainment industry, we're growing big. And, you know, there can be an exchange of culture within this. I mean, in the last representation of the 2020 Expo, a lot of countries came in with ideas, with bilateral trade uh, agreements, with presidents and, uh, you know, representatives and all of that. And for me, I foresee a very healthy future. I know... A lot. I mean, in, in, in recent times, in before 2015, I, I receive a lot of visitors here from Nigeria on tourism. And also the same thing, I also have friends who are from here who are also going to Nigeria for visit as well on business ideas and all of that. Like I said, there needs to be an exchange and I see uh, a healthy situation coming in with all the reforms that need to take place. For one, I would advise the government to actually look at the area of... Uh, you know, in terms of having a, 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 a very formidable regulation when it comes to the immigration sector, that a conversation needs to ensue in that area where we can actually have an easy flow of, you know, Nigerians wanting to visit the United Arab Emirates for holiday, where people who want to also visit Nigeria in terms of security and all of that can be, can be merged. But on the long term, there's a whole great value of business outcomes that will come. To see. Interesting stuff there. Mr. Abu Bakar Ibrahim is managing partner healthcare and business management consultant. He's based in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Thank you so much. And like I said, we'll keep a tab on this and we'll continue this discussion some other time. Thank you so much, Tulu. Thank you for having me. All right.